Creating video game assets is a lot of work. Everything from concepting to modeling to texturing, whilst trying to keep your game assets optimized for your video game can be quite a challenging task. And what makes it even more difficult is it feels like there's a lack of learning material out there to teach you how to make high detailed assets in an optimal way for your video games. And while there's plenty of losers out there on the internet who love to remind you that the pros don't use Blender, I feel it's not about the programs that you use, but rather the knowledge that you lack. Of course, having access to industry standard modeling and texturing software is going to give you the advantage. If you're an indie developer, then that may not be within your budget. Luckily, it's possible to achieve great results in Blender. It's a classic case of it's not about the tools that you use, it's how you use the tools that you have. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make high quality, realistic assets all inside of Blender for your own video games. I'm going to be making this concrete barricade. It's a simple asset, but it includes a wide variety of tricks and techniques that you can incorporate into your own workflow and apply when creating all sorts of assets. So every asset you create is going to start with a preparation phase. So you're working on a game and for whatever reason, you want to create a concrete barricade. First thing you wanna do is jump over onto the internet and start looking up you know, good reference images for what you're trying to create. Google images, Pinterest are great sites for finding good references. Another pretty handy tip is to take a few minutes to research some dimensions. It really helps to have them on hand so you can easily model things proportionately. If you're good at drawing, then drawing up some concepts of what you're trying to create is going to be very invaluable. I personally suck at drawing, but the indie team that I work with has an amazing concept artist. It's not necessary, but it definitely makes my job a million times easier. But once you have some solid references, then it's time to move on to modeling your assets. Now, modeling a concrete barricade, let's be honest, it's pretty easy. Just look at your references, follow some dimensions, and within a few short minutes, you've got yourself your model. When modeling your game assets, it's really easy to get carried away and want to add as much detail as possible, but this isn't always the best approach. You see, you want to create as much detail as you can with as little geometry as possible. And while that may sound counterintuitive, good textures are going to do a lot of the heavy lifting. But in saying that, creating textures involves so many different things. I'm going to try and include a number of different techniques to show you how you can apply a lot of detail into a model with very few polygons. First things first, we want to look for some good concrete textures. Now, I use textures.com for this. It's a subscription website, but in saying that, there are free websites that you can find textures on as well. You could also create something like this procedurally or even just take your phone out and take photos of surfaces that you can convert into your own textures. No matter which method you follow, for realistic graphics, a normal and roughness map are going to be super important for your materials. So try and always find a texture with those when sourcing your textures. A normal map is just going to add some bumpiness and depth to your surface, while a roughness map is going to handle imperfections in how shiny or dull something is. Think smudges, wet dry areas, fingerprints, and just general things like that. Now that we have a good concrete texture, something that we wanna think about is the general wear and tear of our asset. Now, maybe this barricade is a few years old and has been knocked around a bit, so we want to figure out how we can go about adding some of that damage to our model. One really good method that I like to use quite a lot is to do a little bit of sculpting. You see, we can duplicate our asset, sculpt a lot of detail into it, and then bake that detail to our low poly version with a curve and a normal map. Now, sculpting can seem quite intimidating, but we're not trying to sculpt a video game character. What we're trying to achieve is really quite simple. Let's apply the scale of our barricade, duplicate it, and set one of them off to the side. Now let's rename one high poly and the other one low poly. With the high poly model selected, let's jump over to the sculpting tab. Now sculpting is a skill in itself and it's a skill that I myself am not very good at. Now I use a drawing pad for this. It's nothing special. It's a Wacom one. You can pick one up for about 50 bucks. Otherwise you can still use your mouse. It's just going to be a little bit more extra effort. Now, if you first try and sculpt here, nothing's really going to happen. Sculpting in Blender is simply just pushing vertices around. And because this model has hardly any vertices, there is nothing to really move around. In the sculpting tab, simply press R to bring up the remesh size and drag it to about 0 0.1. 
left click to lock it in and hit control plus R to remesh it. Now, when you press tab, you'll see that it has been remeshed into a dense topology, which gives us the ability to start sculpting. Use the scrape brush to soften up the edges and the clay strips brush to add some damage around and the draw brush to add some cracks if you want. Adjust the strength of the brush to something that is comfortable and start sculpting. Just aim for some general damage and if you want to add some extra detail after, slap on a multi-res modifier and subdivide it once or twice to give you some more vertices to play with. The more powerful your computer is, the more vertices you can handle, but to be honest, there's not really any need to go overboard. Once you've sculpted in some damage, you can head over to the layout viewport. If you've used a multi-res modifier, change the levels viewport to match the number of times you've subdivided it so you can see all the detail in the viewport. Now, our goal is to take this detail and apply it to a low poly model. The way that we do that is by extracting a curve map from our high poly model so that we can apply that to our low poly model. This will highlight the curves and edges that we can use to give the impression that there is curves and edges on these flat surfaces. If we also extract a normal map from this, we can intensify this effect by controlling how light effectively interacts with our objects. Before we do this though, we want to fix a couple of things on our low poly model first. Let's place both models on top of one another, with the low poly model being the one that is selected. With the low poly model selected, let's go into edit mode. Now, if you've sculpted some edges away, we simply want to bevel our low poly model in those sections so that it roughly matches the geometry of our high poly model. Try and get your low poly model to match as close as possible to your high poly model when it comes to things like large chunks missing on your edges or smaller details. You don't have to stress too much about it. You can just bevel the entire model and shave it smooth to round it off if you like. Once that step is complete, it's time to unwrap our low poly model. Now, there isn't really a right or wrong way to do this. You can add seams, you can project from view, you can smart UV unwrap if you really want. My unwrap looks like this. Just try and avoid any sort of UV stretching. There are times when you want to put a bit more thought into your UV unwrap, but in this instance, it isn't really necessary. With our model unwrapped, we want to head over to the shading tab and create a curve map. Hide our low poly model for now and create a new material for your high poly model. Add these three nodes and you want your model to look something like this. Also, make sure that you're in rendered cycle mode for this. I don't think it works in Eevee, so yeah. With that done, we can unhide our low poly model and add an image texture node. Create a new image, set it to 2048 by 2048 and set it to non-color. Now to bake it, change the max samples to 10 in the render sampling tab, change the bake type to emit and check selected to active with an extrusion of about 0.5. Change your color management view transform to standard. Now select your high poly model, control select your low poly model and lastly select the image texture that you have just created. Hit bake and once done, save the image file somewhere on your computer. To bake a normal map, we just wanna add a new image file again, give it the same settings, simply change the bake type from emit to normal, select your models in the same order, then select your normal map and hit bake again. Save it and now we have a curve and a normal map. We can now hide our high poly model and connect our images to our model as such. Add a color map to the curve map to get a bit more control over the colors and then we can multiply that over the top of our concrete texture. Sometimes the curve map will add highlights in sections of the map you don't want them. You can easily paint those out in texture painting tab or in a separate software as well. With all that done, we're pretty much up to our detailing phase. We have our concrete texture. We have a little bit of wear and tear. Now we can start looking at adding some extra details. We're talking bottom dirt. We're talking grunge maps. We're talking gradients. You can find some bottom dirt in your favorite texturing website. Just make sure it's a PNG. And then once you've got that, drag and drop that into your material. A useful technique to be aware of is the use of multiple UV maps. We already UV unwrapped our model. And if we wanted to add some bottom dirt to our material, it's going to be a bit of a pain to make it line up with everything. Luckily, we can give our model a second UV map by going into object data and adding a new UV map. Connect a UV map node to your bottom dirt texture and select the new UV map that you just created. Head over to the UV editing window, select the UV map that you wish to unwrap and unwrap it to your texture. You can now mix these together via a mix shader node and now you have two textures layering on top of one another. Don't be afraid to add some grunge maps to your concrete. It can help break it up a little bit and really help sell that realism. Add a gradient to the bottom just so it's a little darker at the base of the barricade. And that's basically all there is to it. You can add a new UV map, unwrap it a little better and bake everything out onto those new UVs or you can just keep adding things until you're happy. Now, this goes without saying. 
There is no right or wrong way to go about creating your game assets. There will always be someone who's more skilled than you who can just make better shit. There's always going to be a way that you can optimize something better. The point of this video is to just demonstrate a couple of techniques that you can learn from and start incorporating into your own workflow. So go out there and just make some cool shit. Here we have the art of the week posted by Jakarta Cardiana. Why is that so hard to say? I'll leave a link to their art station down there. You can go to it, check out their work. They're pretty good. If you want to get your artwork featured at the end of these videos, come join the Discord and post your stuff in there. We're just a bunch of game dev nerds talking a bit of shit, having a bit of a laugh, playing some games. It's a good time. And I think that pretty much wraps everything up. Subscribe, like, comment. I also wanted to say thank you for helping me hit 1K subscribers. I was meant to do something for it, but I kind of forgot. I got busy with like work and stuff like that. Now I'm sitting at 1.6K subscribers. I still can't believe 1.6K people like listening to me talk. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye.